All right, guys, uh, it's Josh with back with another video. And today I'm gonna show you how to retrofit a new style uh, charger absolute pressure sensing unit to the old style. All right, so little disclaimer, uh, I kind of go through this video pretty fast. It's meant so you can, you know, replay stuff, pause it on the graph that you'll see and, uh, you know, go through it a couple times. It's pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple, which is why the video's short. There's not a whole lot to the video uh, other than just what wires go where, and the rest is kind of common knowledge, you know, solder, make sure it reaches. It's a pretty easy thing to do. If you have questions, feel free to ask, but into the video. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean it. That's better. So the wires we're gonna be dealing with is this temp sensor right here, which goes into that brown connector, and this connector right here, this three pin connector, which will go into your old charge air um, sensor. Now my reason for doing this is because I ended up breaking that sensor and it's extremely expensive to get a new one. It's cheaper to go this route. We're going to need some wire. So right in here, I just have 20 gauge wire. Uh, that's typical automotive wire. So that's where we work fine. You need your new charge air sensor and temp sensor. This is a newer one than the one that's on the car. So you need that with a four pin connector. Usually you want to get with about, you know, two, if you can find a four pin connector with like two feet of this, then you won't need the wire, but if you have just this, then the wire is a necessity. You will need a soldering iron, solder, some shrink wrap, your two bolts that hold that in, your new charge pipe, and if you're doing it on a Vigan, a 2000 saw Vigan or some cars, uh, they actually don't utilize this grommet up here. Come up with a way to block that off. So now we're at the car. My lighting's not very good in the garage, so this is my light and this. Um, what we're gonna do is you're going to take that connector right there. That is the one that goes into the top of your old sensor. So first things first, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your old one off. Once that's off, save this. You're going to need it. It's your clamp for the, the throttle body side of the charge pipe. Then you're gonna take this connector, your temp sensor that was on the bottom below the bypass valve. And then you're gonna take the old sensor for your old absolute charger pressure sensor and you're gonna snip both of those off these wires and you'll extend them a considerable amount. Make sure you extend them enough to get from there to the front of the charge pipe. Get to the exact same length, strip off either ends of all of them. So you see how this one I have it stripped. Do that to every single one on both ends and then we'll wire it up. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna twist and solder. That's what you're looking for right there. So nice solder on all those. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your heat shrink and you're gonna slide it down on each and every one of those, heat shrink those. You need heat shrink, you can use tape, but I don't recommend it. Heat shrink is waterproof, so that's what you want, or resistant. So now what you should have is this. You should have the black ones, which are from your temp sensor, the white ones, which are the ones I extended from down there, your intake temperature sensor. That's the little brown connector, that's that guy. What you're gonna do with these two, okay? This black one, gone. You don't need the black one anymore. So you can cut that one down there, put some tape around it. Don't have to worry about that one again. These are the four wires we're working with. The reason you do that is because in this little bundle here, these three that we already extended, you already have a ground. See right there, that black wire? So you already have a ground, which means that ground is useless. You don't need two grounds. So our four wires we're working with is in color coordination, the white and black, the blue and white, the solid black, and this guy here, which is a gray. This is the part you gotta pay attention to. Put a graph. It was sent to me by Kyle. He sent me a graph of a bunch of the, the wiring you need for this. So if you look on this, you see it's A, B, C, D. You don't have to worry about the color of the wires. It doesn't matter because if you're getting this from a 9.5, the colors are gonna be different. If you're not getting it from a 9.5, they might be the same colors. You can just follow color match, right? Anyway, so this, there's gonna be a graph. I'm gonna post it on the screen right now. All you're gonna do is you're gonna match up your A, B, C, and D to the A, B, C, and D in the car. So what you're gonna do next, the first one you're gonna connect to your new sensor is your black and white, on my sensor at least, which is actually your B. So ignore the colors, go by the, no, the, the letters. So we're gonna take B. So when you're doing that, you're gonna look at B and you connect B to black and white. That was the part that it gets tricky, so pay attention. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna take C and you're gonna connect C to your gray wire. Obviously it looks white because I extended it, but your C is gonna become your gray wire. A is gonna be your ground. So you're gonna take your black wire from over there and hook that up to your A. Then you're gonna take your last wire, which is your blue and your white, and you're going to connect that to your D. 
your sensor is wired up. Now I'm gonna run this by like one more time with you guys. So your D pin connector will go to your blue and white wire. Your C pin connector will go to your all gray wire. Not sure what happened here, but my mind kind of shit the bed. I meant to say B pin, so this is where your B pin goes to. We'll go to your black and white from your temp sensor. And finally, your A pin connector will go to your all black ground. Now, next, make sure these O-rings are good. Put your pipe back on, plug it in, put your bolts on. Um, no check engine light. Don't know if that's because it's burnt out or not. take the car past three grand because I'm still in braking period but as you can see I'll go to three grand in third gear and you can see the boost feels nicely so that means it worked so there you guys go if you have any questions ask uh, I've been looking a long time to do this and I've not been able to find anything so I did my research talked to a lot of people and got all the information I need and I made a video about it so now if anybody needs help there's a video on it shows you how to do it and uh, yeah hope this helps and Take care. See you guys.